I am José Manuel García Lomas, an Allen Perkins, president and first consultant of the firm García Lomas and Allen Perkins, the ADO Corporation. Today we are going to speak in this video of motivation, leadership and primary motivators. Many attempts to codify the different motivations that drive human acts have been assisted throughout time, and a definitive answer has not yet been found. But today we are going to propose a truly practical model that gives us a good explanation to the reasons that condition human acts. The model we propose is called as the eight primary motivations, and not in order of importance because it will depend on each person, but following a random order, the eight primary motivations are first security. Everyone with greater or lesser strength desire safety. That is expressed in very different ways and it changes with age. 2. Comfort, health. The line of least effort. There is nothing more comfortable than the full state of good health without any aspect that bothers us and with a feeling of fullness. Third the benefit. There is no need to make great efforts to explain it and express its strength for vast majority of people. Also remember, there is only benefit if there is a need satisfied. Here we will quote Frederick Herbert, renowned psychologist who became one of the most influential people in management and business administration, and who developed the hygiene factors theory and motivations. According to Frederick Herbert, a motivator is that whose presence motivates, but a hygiene factor is that whose presence does not motivate, but its absence demotivates. Attention! Money sometimes is a hygiene factor. Example, that economic improvement that you expected long ago, when it arrives, sometimes arrives too late and in a smaller amount than expected. In addition, galloping inflation eats the economic improvement, therefore that increase in money is not a motivator but a hygiene factor. But you have to do hygiene, because if not, there is a demotivation. Fourth, the prestige. Prestige, the ego, ego side, is an inexhaustible source of motivation for human beings. If we analyze the reasons why we do many things in life, surely in the background we would find the motivation of prestige with its various faces. Fifth, the desire of knowledge. Curiosity belongs to this type of motivation. Knowledge and understanding, features of the conscious soul in which humanity finds itself today. It is a strong motivation, a strong lodging in evolving persons. Sixth, self-conservation or survival, a hugely basic motivation. So what will we not do for self-preservation and survival? Seventh, the social, sympathy, support, appreciation, important motivation that affects relations between human beings. Eighth, love. 
with different expressions that goes from the sex appeal, sexual attractiveness, basic instinct, the love of ideas, things, people, the love of ethical and aesthetical aspect. Not only must one be ethical, but also aesthetic, said the prophet. And the love to the search in the human beings in relation to the four Plato paradigms, the lodging of every human being for the good, the beauty, the truth, the justice. The search for good, the good, the goodness, doing the good, the search for beauty, the beautifulness, feeling the beautifulness, the search for the truth, the true, to develop the ability to discriminate, separate the error from the truth. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, said the Christ. The search for the just, the justice, loving the just. And now that we have covered the eight primary motivations, the question is, why is the questioning technique so important in the business world, in negotiation, in sales, and in leadership? Well, because with a good questioning technique, you can find out what is the motivation mix of your different collaborators and clients and thus be able to apply the golden rule of motivation that says appealing to a strong motivations is positive, give result, while appealing to the weak motivation is a complete and total loss of time. How many times I have been losing my time? And how many times others have lost their time with me, appealing unknowingly to weak motivations, making false assumptions not confirmed, since as we know, the assumptions are the mother of all bunglers. That is, how many times do we act on the basis of unchecked assumptions and too late I realized how wrong I was by not having confirmed, checked my assumptions. Know the different motivations of your different interlocutors and clients and respect them, because people, the human beings, we always try to realize our motivations. Now I propose you an interesting exercise. What different positions, levels occupy the people you relate to from inside of your organization and from outside your organization? Choose two or three people in each situation and then indicate the three most characteristic motivations and in order of importance of the reasons chosen in the previous question. Please think about it for a short time. Will we have succeeded? If you are interested in our videos, I suggest that you give a like and subscribe to our channel.